Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you guys. You've been asking me about how uh, I did with my vinyl heat press, and I thought it'd be a really great video to share with you the ins and outs on vinyl. If you want to do a business, I learned a lot this baseball season, and I thought it would be a good video to share with you on the things that I learned as I did this for clients and some of the things that I wish I was told before I got into this. So yay, that's what this video is going to be about. I hope you like it, okay? Okay, so let's talk heat press. I ended up buying my heat press at eBay and I really do recommend that you do not do that. When I researched eBay, I researched uh, the company. They looked like they were from California, but come to find out when I got the heat press, the heating element wasn't right. It was 100 degrees off and I ended up trying to contact eBay and they never contacted me back and I also tried to contact the seller. The seller was from Japan so when I finally did call the number we couldn't talk to each other. I told him that heating element was messed up. He said everything will be okay. He said okay okay and nothing happened. Uh, I made um a complaint on eBay concerning the heat press, it just didn't work. What happened is Hurtwigs here in San Antonio, they sell heat presses and they're like six to $700 and I didn't want to spend that much on a business that I didn't know, I didn't know what it would be like. And she told me not to do it online. I should have listened to her in hindsight because I do recommend if you buy a heat press, buy a product that from a company that you could go back if something happens you could talk to a person and they can get it fixed for you because they'll the store will warranty it i'm sure her wicks would have warrantied it for me if there was a problem or they have a repairman who would have repaired it for me either way if i bought it here locally i think it would have been better what ended up happening is a friend of mine bought one when she went to a convention for stalls and she had a stalls hotronic heat press that had the hydraulics and the time timer settings and she had it in a box and by random we I went to a quilting meeting and she said she had one she hadn't used and that if I wanted to she would sell it to me um, she got it at the convention for like 400 maybe $500 give or take and she also got other products she sold it to me for $300 let, let me share this at the time when we were doing this transaction I didn't know um, how much they were I just knew that Stahl's Hotronics heat presses were really good um, I looked it up my heat press is an 11 by 15 heat press and uh, if you buy it from Stahl's online it's like $900 so uh, I really got blessed and I thanked her for it and I also quilted a very difficult quilt for her to kind of make up for finding out that I, she really blessed me. I wanted to bless her back. Would I buy a heat press from Stahl's or a Hotronics? Yes, I would. The first one I bought would draw out electricity to where my lights would dim out with the uh, Hotronics heat press that I got. It did take juice out of my electricity, but it didn't change the lighting and it didn't turn this room like an oven like the first one that I bought from eBay did. So I do recommend that you buy locally if you can. Second, that you do buy if you're interested in doing this, you really do need to have a good heat press that you can rely on, that it doesn't break on you while you're doing clients. I had so many clients come and each client brought 15 to 20 jerseys and it would have just been such a mess if my heat press would have messed up and I wouldn't have been able to do the work. Um, so that is a huge factor. So my suggestion is buy locally if you can. If not, I do recommend Stahl's Heat Press. They have some at lower price points, but I really love the Stahl's Hotronics a Hydraulics Heat Press. Worth the investment is like having a really great embroidery machine or having a really great quilting machine. You want a machine that really you know, can endure the kind of work you're going to put on it. Okay, what features would you want in a heat press? I thought this was important to share. I must haves on my next heat press when I do this. Make sure it has a pop-up hydraulic system and it has the timers. And I really do like the pressure, you know, the pressure settings on the heat press. It wasn't as important as those other two when I was doing 
when I was working for four hours straight. So those are some of the features that I recommend for your heat press, okay? Um, so I'm gonna give you the Da -da 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 -da, which one you would buy if it were me, if it were me. Um, honestly I love the Cricut Explore Air Cutter to weed out the cut it, I mean it was perfect um, I think maybe it's not a professional level of a cutter but it cuts as if it is and other things I really liked about the cutter it cuts clean one the resizing is so easy like to resize the name and extremely easy to resize the name the mirroring you can flip the mirroring um, by pushing just the button also you can collect all the names in one which was called weld and then you can flip it and it, it flips as one whole pattern instead of having individual cuts to do the settings it is so simple all I did is put vinyl and it cut perfectly the vinyl the way it needed to so now that you have your heat press and you have your cutter and you're kind of set up a little bit, now it's time to play with the vinyl. Here in San Antonio, there's a place called Herwigs. They sell vinyl by square foot. And I uh, was overwhelmed by how much vinyl there is out there. I mean, it is overwhelming. And so let me show you some of the variety of the vinyls. They have glitter. They have, um, I love this silver, metallic, neon. They have glow in the dark. They have white, of course, and they also have the kind of vinyl that you can stick and make for decals, window decals, signs, and stuff like that. So there's kind of like a learning curve when it comes to all this. The company they sell that they use is called Specialty Materials, and that is who, I guess, their supplier is, I believe. Um, the vinyl I use for baseball, it's called Thermoflex Plus. I tested them out. I made some shirts in cotton and also that stretchy breathable fabric that they use for baseball. I've tried these vinyls on. I washed them in high heat, high heat in the water, high heat in the dryer, and I never had anything peel up on me or a wrinkle or melt on me. So I felt very confident when I did the flyer for the Youth Association that I wasn't going to have a lot of problems with people coming back because it peeled off. So that's why I like um, this company. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about your fonts. Um, I looked up at different companies and they use the stall font, stall.com, that sells the heat press. They use, it's called a pro block font, so that's the font they use. Also companies here in San Antonio use that font, you buy that font from stalls. Here when I do my embroidery, the font I use is called the technical block font and it's a, a little bit more sporty of a font and I like it and I use that when I do embroidery. So I found a font that's in between my kind of font and and the pro block font and that font is called the college block font now on Cricut the their machine they do have that font and it is for free I didn't know that and if you don't have a Cricut you can do download that font online for free so let's talk about font sizes and that's really important because it's going to be in the back of the jersey and you want it to look nice you want it to look good um, I called different companies and they said their block size was two inches high. When I did it, it looked really small and I'll show you a picture of it, um, of the size difference. I decided to go with a two and a half inch high block, so it's two and a half inches tall. and. On your Cricut, um, it'll measure it out for you automatically if you have the lock on it. Um, what I decided to do that I would only allow it to be the distance of 11 and a half inches wide. And the reason is on the child's jersey, um, 11 and a half inches fit all the way across perfectly on the smaller jerseys. Um, and I did that for all jersey sizes. So if you have a long name like Rodriguez or Henderson, um, I made sure that the Cricut would measure out the name by the 11 and a half inches and two and a half inches tall. Okay, so for numbers, um, you can do the numbers different. Um, there was two sizes that I heard about. One was an eight inch size number or a six inch size number. When I did the numbers for certain people who wanted like um, the jersey that didn't have anything in the back, I did them 
If they were adults, I did them eight inches high and then Cricut would measure it for me on the width, so I don't know. It was based on the number. And um, on the children's, I would do it six inches tall and then Cricut would measure the sizing for me automatically. So let's talk placement. When you're placing the number on the jersey from the back of the neck where you see the tag, all the way down, measure six inches down, and that from the six inches down, that's where you put the number, okay? And then from that, when you already have the number on your shirt, I measured an inch across and put the number on top. So I gave myself an inch distance between the number to place the name on top of the jersey, okay? Let's talk money. I know you're probably wondering how much money you can make doing this. Um, each square foot, if I bought it here at Herwix, was three dollars and twenty-five cents. So I ended up using probably three square feet of vinyl, which comes out to ten nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Let's add tax ten dollars. Well, I didn't pay tax, but let's say ten dollars to round it off to make it a little bit easier in my brain. Um, so I, it cost me ten dollars to do a team of twelve. Um, to cut it on one sheet of square vinyl on the big names like Martinez, Rodriguez, those big names, Johnson, uh, you could put four names on one square foot. There are other names that are smaller like Chris or DJ or TJ. Those on, those on the square foot of vinyl, I could probably put six to five names, sometimes maybe eight depending on the team names. It's just kind of varied. The most vinyl I used per team was three and a half square feet of vinyl, and even then it wasn't much. So I charged six dollars for every jersey that I put a name on. So if I have 12 people, I made $72, and let's say it cost me $10, so I made $62 to do one team. So you can make a lot of money doing t-shirts with the heat press. Now let me just say, of course, the heat press cost me and the cutter cost me, but I'm not taking that into consideration when, you're, when really the initial cost to do the job um, is the vinyl that you're going to use and waste. Um, so you can make a lot of money quickly and let me share with you the difference in time frame. For me to do the cutting, um, it could take me probably an hour to do all the cutting and weeding and getting the names ready and getting the shirts ready and even heat pressing them. The heat press system, as I was really organized, it took me 20 to tw 28 to 30 minutes to heat press all the shirts and it probably took me 30 minutes to get everything cut and weed it without any distractions. Maybe an hour and a half, if that, at the most. When I do embroidery work and I do a team, it takes me three and a half hours. So for me to finish a job with embroidery, it takes a lot more time. Um, the materials are not as expensive and you make quite a bit of money. And what I like the best about it is you save a whole bunch of time. You make, a, you, you make a lot of money in a smaller amount of time, even though you make a lot of money with embroidery. Um, I just, vinyl is faster. That's what I found. Vinyl is a lot faster. It takes less labor, I guess. That's what I'm trying to share. And less time to get the job done. Well, with embroidery, if you make mistakes, I have a tool for that. It's called the Peggy Sticker Stitch Eraser can't talk right now and I love that product because um, when you're doing a whole bunch of work for a whole bunch of people and it's all a whole bunch of names a whole bunch of time um, you can make a whole bunch of mistakes and so I knew in vinyl that there was a potential of making mistakes so I found this product called vinyl lettering removal solvent I love this stuff at first when I made a mistake I put the wrong name on the wrong jersey and I almost passed out because yeah, it was messy. And I didn't know if this stuff really worked. They told me it worked, but you know, experience trumps uh, knowledge. So what I ended up doing is I had to, they said to put the stuff on the back of where the vinyl was. Um, what I found works the best is you get yourself a syringe and put it right exactly on the vinyl 
the lettering that you messed up. The vinyl literally shrinks up like it shrivels, like it melts it and you could pull it off. The only thing is, is this product does leave the glue residue and what I found worked for me the best is if you get a piece of muslin fabric, soak it and rub the shirt at different angles and it'll remove all that glue residue. You will have a imprint of the name which would freak me out because I would have to put a different name and you don't want to see the imprint on the jersey because then they'll know you made a mistake, you know. So what I found is after you've removed all of it and removed all the residue, the glue residue, go ahead and wash the jersey with soap detergent wash it and rub it and you know just go through it get all the chemical and I also use Tide or Shout whatever you your preference of detergents are I'm sure they're all the same I put it in the dryer after I washed it and I did it on the sink put it in the dryer let it air dry and then you'll still see the imprint okay it's okay it's okay um, when I saw it I freaked out go ahead and put the new name or the right spelling or whatever the mistake is put it on there when you heat press the jersey the imprint will disappear because the heat will imprint uh, the jersey itself and um, that imprint will disappear and you will not be able to see it so no one will know that you made a mistake this product is really awesome I paid I have the price I paid $16.95 for it um, I am so glad I got it. I am so thankful that I had it. Uh, what I learned that if vinyl, when it's pressed already on a shirt, when you repress vinyl, it almost goes transparent. I don't know. It's weird. Let me explain what I'm trying to say. I had a red jersey, let's say with a number one on it, and when I went to put the name on top of it, of course I wanted to press the whole name and number together. What ended up happening when I pressed it, the number turned pink. The number turned pink. Uh, no one said that to me when I bought vinyl, and I haven't seen that anywhere in YouTube that hey if you press vinyl twice or heat it twice that it changes its color um, especially on the red I didn't see it happen as much on blues or blacks but for the red so the way I did that to prevent that is I made sure the number was off the plate and I only allowed myself to heat press where the name was because I gave myself an inch and I heat pressed on top so I never heat press numbers again twice because of that situation that happened to me it was crazy I also heat press some soccer jerseys and they had the number and soccer has multi-dimensionals like a line of black a line of yellow and then a line of green when I heat pressed it again because I didn't know this happened people they don't tell you when I heat pressed the name literally almost like the vinyl melted in the shirt and you saw the colors pop through almost like the vinyl became transparent now what's kind of neat about it it's I heat pressed the name again so I also had that same look in the name it looked kind of cool and when I talked to the client about the situation they liked it um, so it was just <laughs> something that worked out for me, but I think that um, if I didn't have some really cool clients that they liked the look of it, I would have ended up having to peel all that color vinyl off and redo the numbers and the names at one setting. Um, Cause that could have been disastrous. So that's something you should know that when you have a jersey that already has a number and you're putting a name on it make sure you only heat press the name if you possibly can because the the vinyl that's already pressed on there somehow it changes especially on the red jerseys and I also noticed it on the soccer jerseys okay so just know that that could be a catastrophe um, that can happen okay so that's something I really learned hard lesson I also wanted to share a product with you that I ended up getting. It's called Thermo Tape. It's a half inch wide tape. The reason I got this is I was also heat pressing some uh, sh some hats and I was doing name and number on the hats with the heat press. This really does help in taping the vinyl so it doesn't move when you're heat pressing it. Um, I really do 
think this is something that is really useful, especially when you're doing bags or you're doing hats or you're doing weird shaped items. When you're heat pressing it, it keeps the vinyl from moving and shifting. So when you press uh, the vinyl in its position, you can also reinforce it by taping it. So I ended up getting this product and they were only like $5, $4.95. I ended up getting two. I really do like these. I got this at Pro World um, Supply for this, vine, uh, this tape. So I really do hope you like this video. I hope I've given you I'm trying to give you as much information as I possibly can as I've learned this process of being a heat press person, a vinyl person. I, so I just wanted to share with you the things that I wish I had someone tell me because it took me a couple hours to figure out the font size, the font styles. Um, it took me a, a, quite a while to figure out what kind of vinyl worked the best for me. Um, of course, it's up to you what you like. But for somebody that's starting off like me, I, I'm sharing with you what I wish I knew. Um, you make a lot of money, guys. I'm just sharing with you. I don't want to talk about money and make it all about money. It's really about just, for me, how it opened the door for me to do other creative things. Um, especially the Cricut, the way I'm making new designs. And I could also do shirts and stuff like that. It just opened the door for me for the creativity aspect. And the blessing is um, it opened the door for my business too. It just gave it almost like a different branch. And I'm really thankful for all the people that I did work for. And so, yeah, this is something that you can really earn a lot of money. Um, and it is a lot of fun. Just know that you become a prisoner in your house and, and you'll have so much work for so long that you don't even have time to think. So, well, that's what happened to me anyway. I really thank you for watching, okay? Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.